Hello everybody, my name is Ampere Beep, and welcome back. Today, we are finally getting on to the Hanford Viaduct video that I promised in the last video. My previous video, I had to cancel as a result of a scheduling conflict. My summer has been quite a bit more busy than I expected it to be, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get very many videos out in the future. But, I promised to make this video, and I'm going to keep that promise. Thank you all for the support in the last video, and I'd like to say, feel free to join our Discord server. We have a ton of cool conversations there, and we talk about things inside and outside of California. And there are people from all over the world there. So feel free to drop on by. The link is down in the description below. Other than that, let's get started with today's Sentinel-2 update. Now let's get started with today's Sentinel-2 update. The first thing we're going to be looking at is this section of right-of-way just north of the SR-46 overcrossing. Now you can see on the left is June 19th, 2024, and on the right is July 24th, 2024. Some work is being done right here. As you can see, the coloration has darkened there. There are a lot of things that could be happening here, so we'll have to wait and see. The next thing we're going to be looking at is the final thing under construction in CP4, which is the Canal 9-22. We can see on the left there was some ongoing construction work. You could see that the water had been drained from this section of the canal. And on the right, you could see that the right-of-way has moved further south. It seems like they might have built a canal culvert underneath here, but this canal relocation is lagging quite far behind, and I suspect not a lot of work will be done until after the harvesting season is over in late September into mid-October. Until then, we might not see much progress here. Otherwise, the right-of-way has progressed quite nicely. Moving all the way north at Avenue 56, you can see there was some right-of-way work ongoing, and now in July, that right-of-way work has cleared up, and it seems like, based on the small dark splotch right here, right above where my cursor is, they could be doing some pier work, though it's very hard to tell. We'll have to see what happens with that later. And here, just south of the Avenue 88 grade separation, we can see some right-of-way work has been done. They've cleared some of this right-of-way to the left of this track road, and we should be seeing some more progress here soon, in theory, but otherwise, no changes in this area. And here at the Lakeland Bridge, we can see that some clearing for the future canal alignment has been done. This gray area right here is the future canal alignment underneath what will be a bridge. And you can see that in June that was not there. So some progress has been made, as well as this canal being drained. We are now 100% certain of this having taken place. Moving further north at Avenue 120, we can see that the abutments, we can see that the embankments on the west side of the grade separation have been built up. Comparing this to June, some significant progress has been made. I expect no work to be done on the eastern side until much later. And here at the Whitley Avenue grade separation, on the left you can see this red waterproofing membrane, or formwork, it's hard to tell at this resolution, was in place. And now, a bridge deck is there. So this structure is progressing quite nicely. We should see this finished up near the end of the year, so we'll have to keep waiting to see what else happens here. And we got some news. The Orange slash Wakena Avenue, both grade separation and bridge, are now under construction. This is going to be a curved bridge crossing over the future high-speed rail right-of-way and Sweet Canal. The fact that this has started is a really good sign, because this is one of the last remaining blockades in uh, the central portion of CP23. Moving forward on the south side of Idaho Avenue, we can see that this canal has been drained, which means the relocation should be starting very soon. Based on the cleared right-of-way, I expect it to be moved to the west side of the alignment up until it reaches Idaho Avenue, at which point it will make a right turn, go into a canal culvert underneath the right-of-way, and then pop out on the other side in its existing location. And, and here at Hanford Armona Road, back in June, we could see that the road was still in place here, but now... Embankments are being built up for the grade separation. This is an awesome sign, as this is the next structure south of the Hanford Viaduct, which we will get to shortly. And here at the Hanford Viaduct, we can see that before, everything north of the San Joaquin Valley Railroad, and on the south side, most of it has its deck plates installed. And now, as we move forward, we can see the southernmost segment right here has deck plates installed as well. This could also be concrete that has been poured, but without drone footage, it's hard to tell. At Fargo Avenue, back in June, we could see that the western embankment was built up, but no girders have been installed yet. But now, you could see the girders have been put in place. I don't believe the authority has posted about this yet, which leads me to believe that we should see something sometime next week. 
but it is very clear that girders have been put in place, especially if you look at it very closely. You can see the white coloring of the girders right here, which meets with both roadways on either side. Whereas previously, you could tell that it was a bit darker, which indicated it was part of the soil underneath the grade separation where the high-speed rail alignment will be. Moving forward to the Conejo Viaduct, we can see that in June, the rebar for the alignment's bridge deck was not fully set, and now it is fully white, which indicates that the concrete has cured. So in the future photos, we should see the edge walls on the sides of the high-speed rail alignment be formed up and poured. And at that point, the structure will be done. And now, some important news. The High-Speed Rail Authority has just opened up as of last, well, 10 days ago at this point, the Mountain View and Floral Avenue grade separations. So this is huge. Two more grade separations done in CP23. We could see pictures of Mountain View here and Floral here. And on the map, we can see very clearly it is fully done. The other thing we can notice is the BNSF track realignment, which from what the Discord has told me, will potentially be done by November. That would be really awesome because the current BNSF alignment is where the high-speed rail tracks will eventually have to be. And of course they can't get work done until they relocate these tracks. And in conjunction with this, the authority has announced the closure of Nebraska Avenue, which means that this grade separation is starting as well. Moving forward to Manning Avenue, we can see the embankment on the Eastern side is moving along quite nicely. No progress yet on the west side of the railroad tracks, but I expect that once the former BNSF tracks get thrown onto the new alignment, we should see the western side move forward quite quickly. Now, at the Fresno Trench, just north of State Route 180, where the high-speed rail tracks will cross underneath this canal, and there is a Y on top of the canal, no progress has been made, but on the right, the ballast has been laid to move the tracks back to their original position. This is a really good sign as it means that this portion of the trench should be done very soon and they can continue moving south into where the tracks are currently on their shoe fly. And now moving north to McKinley Avenue, this grade separation started construction this month. We can see that they've cleared the road on the west side all the way up until the highway. They have removed the off-ramp for State Route 99 and they've also removed the old roadway on the east side for just the short section here. This grade separation should be under construction for the next year and a half, as per usual with these grade separations, so we'll have to keep a watch on this. Moving even further north, here at the Golden State Boulevard realignment, we can see that even though before it was fully paved, it is very clear now that they have fully finished this section. We don't know if they have closed the old Golden State Boulevard alignment next to the railroad tracks yet. I would assume not, because some driveways are still butting onto that old roadway. So we'll have to keep a watch on that as well. And finally, moving all the way north to Avenue 17 near Madera, we can see some more work is being done here. I'm not exactly sure what's happening here, as we have not seen much drone footage recently, but it does look like some formwork for the deck is in place, as previously it was just the girders crossing the tracks. Let's keep an eye on this, and I expect some significant progress to be done by the next video. Now, with that out of the way, Let's get on to the Hanford Viaduct model. Now, a couple months ago, I was just messing around in Blender, and I decided to make a model of the Hanford Viaduct using the California Public Utility Commission documents that I could find online. And I went a little bit overboard with it, and at this point, I thought it would be worth showing it off to you guys. In the video, so at the end of the last video, I showed you a rendered screenshot of this section right here. And we can go much further in depth now that I can show it live to you guys. Let me remove the deck here. All of the Rosa girders that have been installed, as well as their bent caps and cross beams, are in place here, including their seismic pads. We can see that we can see that the final configuration will be a row of girders on the east side, a row of girders in between the two directions of State Route 198, and a row of girders on the north side of State Route 198 between the westbound lanes and Lacey Boulevard. And then there's this next row of girders here, which is four girders wide instead of three, will support the end of the siding track. Now the layout of the Hanford Viaduct is very different depending on what source you look at. The original information that I had been given from the CPUC documents was that the station area would be the station building being on the north side of the San Joaquin Valley Railroad tracks, a giant parking lot here, and then some retention ponds here. But since then, the renders provided by the High Speed Rail Authority have shown a station building on the south side of the tracks here, the parking lots being here, and then retention ponds and potentially TOD in this area as well. 
Now, as for all of the Central Valley stations, there will be two through tracks here, which are visible with the southernmost portion of the viaduct, a siding track on the west side here, and then once we get closer to the actual station, a siding on the east side here. And this siding will merge into a platform for the northbound tracks. And of course, the left side of the viaduct, which is the west side, will be the southbound tracks. And these platforms will continue over the San Joaquin Valley Railroad, and there will be some form of transfer here to the future Cross Valley Corridor, which I discussed in a previous video. Now, we don't know much about the Cross Valley Corridor platform layout, but we do know that there's going to be some form of concrete wall on the north side and south side. And this is, these are the only tracks that I actually put in as these are existing. Now, in all the drone footage we've seen, there have been edge walls between the siding tracks and the main through tracks up until where they merge with the platforms. And this is where the OCS or overhead catenary poles will be, as well as the signaling. There are small U-shaped trenches with concrete panel lids on top of them, which is where all of the wiring will go for signaling and train control. And this spans the entire length of the right-of-way, at least on the bridge sections. Now I made this viaduct model before most of the deck had been poured and the edge walls had gone up, so there are some changes here. There is a diagonal wall transitioning between right about here and here, which I believe is just in case a train ends up going off, they don't fall off the end of the viaduct, as this is about 40 feet from here to the ground. It will push any train that ends up going a little too fast to the side and keeps it on the viaduct, which is overall a bit safer. The same with this section here on the eastern side. And then these are tentative because the CPUC documents have some major changes compared to the current design of the structure, but I have it as being a retained embankment shaped like this, as there is the utility right-of-way here. Though it could be a full embankment, we'll have to wait and see for that one. And on the north side of Grangeville Boulevard, there's also a partially retained embankment, but it transitions downwards fairly quickly and it will meet the ground. This could also go away, but I had it covered up by a retaining wall to keep it within the high-speed rail right-of-way. And here, which is a structure that is not under construction yet, this is the Grangeville Boulevard grade separation. From what we understand, it will start construction sometime this year, but it may not look like this. This is a simplified model that I made in order to not need to model out several rows of girders when the documents didn't really show them. So I have it as a tub girder, and this will be similarly constructed to the other rail over road grade separations we've seen on the project, like the ones in CP4 and the ones north in CP23 where you have the abutments here with a short section of retaining wall on either side, and then it tapers out and mostly downward to a full embankment. I've also modeled out some of the roads in the area in order to give people a better understanding of what this area will look like, in addition to the concrete median wall to show roughly what they should look like based on the documentation I've seen. There will still be two lanes of traffic in either direction, if I remember correctly, with the shoulder being on the outside here. So there should be quite a bit of room here for vehicles to go through. They are not changing the configuration of the road. That was a estimation I had made based on the old CPUC documents that has not panned out. And here on the south side is a paved road, but in real life, this is a dirt road connecting to the small farmyard over here. Then as it transitions back to ground level, we see the embankment slowly fading downwards and crossing field here. We have yet to see what this area will look like, but Based on what most other bridge structures have looked like on the project, I estimate it will just be a normal embankment. And it will meet ground level by the time it reaches Hanford Armona Road, which is somewhere around here. I also have the I also have the high voltage lines modeled out, show a little bit more of what's going on here. The existing right-of-way is where these high voltage lines were originally. There is a second high voltage line adjacent to it that is not modeled. And if I remember correctly, these are 115 kilovolt lines based on the documentation I've seen online. Crossing Grangeville Boulevard will require them to relocate a power line underground, and that power line is owned by SoCal Edison. These north-south power lines are owned by PG&E. So with this single power line crossing on the south side of Grangeville Boulevard, it was originally scheduled to be relocated in October of 2022, but delays from the power company, I believe, don't quote me on that, but I believe it's from SoCal Edison, have delayed it until sometime this year. And it might have started already, but it's very difficult to tell from our five meter Sentinel-2 imagery. Other than that, thanks for dropping by. 
I will try to make a video two weeks from now on the usual schedule, but that will be my last video until the end of the year, potentially, if not later. So thanks for watching, everybody. Feel free to join our Discord server. The link is down in the description below. And I don't like advertising this, but I do have a Patreon. If you would like to throw me $5 a month, that would be the place to do it. I will try and use this money to go out and take on-site footage, which I am planning to do in about a month and a half once the Caltrain electrification opens. I can't guarantee I will have a video out on it when it happens, but there will be footage of it. Otherwise, see you guys then. Bye.